Hi, this is Dan Smith of DPS Legal Counsel. Welcome to today's video where I'm going to be talking about a tax issue. Now, this is about a case that just came out yesterday uh, from the U.S. Tax Court uh, entitled Dickinson v. Commissioner. And what this case involves is a, um, a, a taxpayer who was a shareholder of a private company and who wished to donate shares in that company uh, to a charitable organization in order to obtain a, a charitable deduction on his tax return. And <clears throat> the way it works is if you uh, donate appreciated uh, stock in a, in a corporation, um, in, that, in other words, the stock has increased in value from the time you purchase it or acquired it. Uh, what you get when you make a donation of that appreciated stock is you get a, a charitable deduction equal to the fair market value of the stock that you donate, not what you paid for it, not the price uh, the stock was when you acquired it, but rather the increased value of the stock as of the time of your donation. And so giving appreciated stock as a charitable uh, contribution and getting a charitable deduction is a great uh, planning tool that uh, some people like to use who have the ability to give that appreciated stock away to a charity. And that's what this particular taxpayer was going to do. Now, the, the, the taxpayer was going to be giving this stock to a uh, charitable uh, fund that's uh, run and operated by the Fidelity uh, group of, of uh, funds, money market stock funds uh, that Fidelity operates. It has one fund that is a charitable um, organization fund that, that uh, is a 501c3 entity and is able to um, accept donate, charitable donations and for which people who give to that fund are put, uh, th they can get a charitable deduction. And so this taxpayer um, was going to give stock in this company that he had stock in. Uh, he was actually the CFO uh, of this company, this private company. Um, he was going to give the stock to this Fidelity Charitable Fund. Um, now it was the case that uh, this particular charitable fund uh, had internal um, protocols or internal uh, policies that when it acquired uh, stock like this in a, in a private company it would always liquidate the stock uh, into cash, sell the stock, redeem it back once it was the shareholder to the company that issued it and get cash in place of the stock. And so the taxpayer knew that once he made this donation to this charitable fund that the stock was going to be redeemed by uh, the fund um, through uh, through the company that issued it and that the charitable fund would instead have cash. Now, what happened was the Internal Revenue Service took the position that um, the taxpayer, rather than getting a charitable deduction for the fair market value of his stock, should instead be treated as if he, the taxpayer, redeemed the stock and then gave cash to uh, the charitable organization. And if that were the case, then the taxpayer would have a tax bill because he would be uh, taxed on the increase in value between his basis in the stock and what the stock was redeemed at, its fair market value, uh, at the time that it's redeemed. And then he would pay a tax on that and then he, he would get a charitable deduction for the cash amount after taxes that was donated to the entity. So in other words, the IRS wanted to re- characterize what actually happened, the actual transaction, which is the taxpayer gave stock, the, 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 the donee, the charitable organization redeemed the stock, not the taxpayer, for, for cash. The IRS wanted to treat it as if the taxpayer redeemed the stock first, then gave cash. Now the tax court looked at this and said, well, we're going to, uh, uh, we're going to not 
uh, look behind the characterization. We're not going to recharacterize. We're not going to look behind the actual transaction and how it was structured. The taxpayer gave stock away. He parted with all ownership of the stock to the to the charitable organization. The charitable organization is the one that redeemed it and got cash. There's no tax to the taxpayer. Now, it is the case that if a taxpayer uh, owns stock that is uh, that a company, the issuing company, says they're going to redeem, uh, perhaps in a complete liquidation of the company, uh, and so the tax, uh, if a, if a taxpayer has stock like that, knows that it, the company is going to redeem it, it's already been determined, and then gives tries to give the stock away to get the charitable deduction for the full value of the stock. That doesn't work. That's an assignment of income issue. But here, that wasn't the case. There would have been no redemption if the taxpayer had not given the stock to the company uh, and the company then redeemed it. It wasn't a foregone conclusion that the stock was going to be redeemed. Uh, and so, because he parted with, the taxpayer parted with control, ownership of the stock, and the, the donee, the charitable organization itself, chose to redeem the stock and get cash, the taxpayer was entitled to the full charitable deduction. So that this, this case tells you a lot. It tells you, uh, number one, that if you have appreciated stock, it does make a great uh, vehicle for making a charitable contribution because you can get a charitable deduction for the full fair market value of the stock. Number two, it tells you that if you own stock in a company that has uh, already adopted a plan of liquidation and redemption of its stock, it's too late to give the stock away and get the full value because then you would have an assignment of income problem. Third, it tells you that it always makes sense to plan your transactions uh, and so, so that you uh, get the best tax uh, treatment for, the tra for your transaction as possible. Here the taxpayer uh, uh, planned the transaction, did it correctly, gave the stock away, made sure they had good evidence and documentation of that, and got the full benefit of the charitable deduction. So those are some, some important issues to get from this case and something that we can all learn from. All right, that's it for today. I hope, hope this helps, and we'll see you next time.